No, we're, we're not in presentation mode anymore. We're in the Should I start or? Yeah. Yes, please. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the presentation in full uh, full mode. Okay. So let's start. Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to this information session on the call for proposal that we have published uh, for uh, the uh, actions to develop impact performance intelligence services for the social impact investing market actors. Um, my name is Brigitte Fedei Brogno. I'm the head of unit for social and inclusive entrepreneurship in DG Employment in the European Commission. And I will be here this afternoon with my colleagues responsible for the call. And also we have uh, later on, uh, as part of the attempt to answer your questions, we also have colleagues from the financial unit who are with us and also will make you a presentation, hopefully answer your questions relating to this call. So first, uh, I'll start with, uh, yeah, indeed the session is recorded. Um, so in case uh, the problem for you, you can at least turn off your camera. Otherwise, I would ask you kindly, at least when you take the floor, to put on your camera, uh, which is much nicer. So um, I will start by the brief and overall introduction uh, to the reason for us publishing this call right now. So this call first, I mean, is published under the EASY strand of the EFS plus. So the EASY is the employment and social innovation strand, which is managed in direct management under the European Social Fund. What does it mean? It means that it's managed directly by the Commission, mostly to call for proposals like that to look out for good projects uh, that can support our policy. Uh, in that uh, respect, so being part of the European Social Fund, uh, we pursue overall policy objectives like access to employment, social inclusion, which are very important for us, um, and a number of others. And then we have uh, for the uh, directly managed uh, easy strand, more specific objectives. And the one under which we are working right now is the support the development of a social investment market. So this is a uh, follow up to previous work we have been doing under the previous easy program. Well, we wanted to support uh, microfinance, social entrepreneurship, and more generally speaking, the development of the ecosystem around these, uh, these uh, actors. Um, so, uh, as you can see, the, the easy regulation talks about social investment. Uh, and the idea is that um, we have social investment, we have investors that are expecting some form of return, financial and social, which is obviously our specificity here, the social return. And from there on, there has been an evolution, and uh, we are mostly now talking about social impact. Um, social impact is really uh, the uh, main characteristic of the social economic actors with whom we are, we are working. And it's also one of our now important policy objectives. And there's a CAP, which is a social economy action plan. Sorry for the acronym. Uh, social economy action plan was adopted by the commission in 2021. And its objective is really to uh, help put in place the uh, enabling conditions for uh, uh, thriving eco social economy ecosystems in all member states. So it's a very wide uh, action plan covering over 60 activities and, um, and really across, I would say, all um, uh, policy areas um, from uh, employment skills social inclusion, we're also working through, I would say, the anti-implementation side, procurement, taxation, all kinds of uh, dimensions that are necessary for the ecosystem to thrive. And more particularly on uh, social impact, uh, one of the uh, objectives set aside in the uh, CEAP is that uh, we should have an improved understanding and uptake of social impact measurement methodologies that can enable the social economy to communicate its impact and assess access impact-driven finance more easily. <clears throat> so, I mean, the, the, that's really the frame under which we're working. So, uh, social impact with in, immediately the, the uh, key uh, uh, dimension of measurement, methodology, and demonstrating impact, which is important, obviously, for investors. Um, in that respect, we just delivered um, last week uh, joint uh, work we have done with the OECD, which was presented in a webinar last week. 
uh, about measure, manage, and maximize your impact, which is a guide for social enterprises to be able to demonstrate better uh, their impact by uh, helping when, them with developing uh, adequate uh, measurement measures. And um, then we have, uh, we see this being said that social impact is uh, becoming more mainstream, even beyond the social enterprises and social economy strict to tend to. And it's important because, I mean, it could have a transfer transformational uh, impact uh, on the economy um, with all those entities which are interested in delivering impacts, social, uh, environmental, we also consider beyond having the uh, traditional, if I may say, approach to economic growth. So that's why the Commission uh, embarked on the journey to uh, really uh, try to address this uh, emerging market, which is growing actually very fast, the social investment market. And uh, to do that, we have we are equipped with uh, some uh, tools already. Typically, we have the under Invest EU, which is another program from the European Commission under this uh, multi-annual financial framework, which is the program grouping all financial instruments. There is uh, it has four windows, and one of them is called the Social Investment and Skills window, and it is meant to really help uh, investing in typically microfinance, social entrepreneurship, um, social impact, and also social infrastructure. And there we have 2.8 billion available over seven years, and mostly through guarantees. Uh, so guarantees for, I would say, traditional financial instrument loans, uh, typically, but also some equity social impact products, uh, really to try to uh, develop and invest into this uh, ent social entrepreneurship sector and try to spread it out across all member states, because one of the key elements we see as well is that the development across member states is rather uneven still. Um, so from there on, uh, what we, so we have this tool already, we see that the market is growing quite um, nicely, I would say, uh, recently, uh, but also what we hear from stakeholders is that um, there is a lack of structure in the market, and uh, there is uh, a need to, to, to have more trust, basically, from all stakeholders uh, to be able to conciliate growth and integrity. So with this in mind, we have also did some, taken some steps recently to develop our knowledge uh, with the help of external experts. And uh, we will try to uh, work on the uh, fundamentals of what could be done in the sector starting with uh, defining better what is social impact investing. And then we managed to agree more or less on uh, three criteria with an important one, important one being intentionality in the investment. Um, and then we also worked on the uh, use of impact data, the um, challenges for social impact measurement and management and the roles of the public sector, national or EU level or local play in uh, accompanying this emerging market. Uh, what also clearly came across uh, is that uh, social impact measurement and management is key. Uh, and when we mean that, we mean it's not a compliance and reporting issue. It's really talking about management, that it should be in, an uh, integral part of the uh, management of the enterprises. Uh, and also, as I already said, what we see is that uh, there is a kind of demand for more trust. Uh, and confidence uh, on the social impact uh, created uh, so that uh, the market can also be uh, more mature and that investors are confident to invest in it. So um, that's where we stand uh, more or less today. Um, we want to, um, we see that investment screening is not enough and uh, so we need to have some more uh, also uh, knowledge and benchmark and trust overall. So that's in a nutshell, long nutshell, but in a nutshell, the, the frame for this call for proposal that we have published and in which you are interested in. We're very happy to see that a number of actors are interested in that. And there I will pass the floor to Julio who will tell you more about the call properly. Thank you and have a nice meeting. Thank you, Brigitte. Uh, just uh, asking uh, to confirm you can listen to me because I have the uh, 
uh, slides uh, uh, share, so um, I don't see you. Uh, we can hear you, you too. Excellent. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do now is to provide an overview of the call for the for proposals. Uh, just uh, bear in mind that, that uh, it's an overview. Uh, so we uh, decided to highlight some aspects uh, we thought are uh, useful to make sure that uh, let's say uh, the rationale and the philosophy, let's say, behind these call for proposals is uh, understood. Uh, and in this regard, we are uh, introducing some aspects for the full picture. Of course, there is the, uh, the text of the call for proposals, which, by the way, is uh, the uh, reference. So uh, nothing that will be said uh, today uh, is uh, could overrule what we have uh, uh, in the call text. Uh, just, I mean, as a, a general and uh, introductory disclaimer. Um, so when it comes to the call for proposal, we are we are uh, presenting today. Um, Brigitte already uh, mentioned uh, and provided. A, a, Excellent picture of the um, policy context. Now, uh, zooming in, let's say, uh, on the market and looking also somehow at the historical uh, uh, path that uh, the the shape and the building initiatives we have seen in the past uh, when it comes to the social impact investing market, we, we could say that in a first phase uh, there was a strong. Uh, attention paid to the supply side. So basically the concern uh, from those uh, uh, advocating for the uh, uh, social impact investing market and also from the policymaker perspective that, were, that, that was the, the perspective of those who were in uh, charge and in a position to, uh, let's say, help and foster uh, uh, the uh, the emergence of this market, well, the, 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 the main concern was about uh, mobilizing capitals uh, and bringing new additional uh, capital flows to uh, this new uh, uh, market. Uh, then uh, what was uh, the, 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 the subsequent, uh, the following step? Well, um, once the capital flows were coming, uh, Many experts in the field, many practitioners and the investors, especially, realized that there was uh, an issue in terms of building uh, good pipelines. So uh, there was an absorption rate uh, uh, issue. Uh, and uh, so the focus shifted and, and became more on the demand side. Uh, in terms of capacity building, investment readiness, and so on. Uh, of course, um, the, the, the first uh, uh, understanding was once we have the supply side and the demand side, we need to make sure that these two sides uh, speak to each other and uh, uh, are able to meet. Uh, so there was also some uh, important work at intermediary level, uh, financial intermediaries I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, but what was uh, missing then? Uh, because we have seen the market growing, but uh, in terms of structure, uh, still uh, there is some work to do. Uh, and we realized that we had the supply side in place, the demand side, improved uh, and also the intermediary level was working but what was really missing in terms of market design uh, to ensure the structuring of the market was uh, let's say knowledge and trust uh, mainly trust uh, then we ask ourselves how trust spread among market players and then we realize the the, the role of uh, knowledge that needs to play and to kick in uh, in the market. So far, uh, uh, the idea was uh, more deals, more trust, kind of, kind of automatic process. This 
uh, did not happen. Uh, there are many in explanation of this. Uh, first of all, because markets are a social construct. <laughs> but uh, um, what we have seen that there is a role uh, for a field, or even we can call it an industry, uh, there is a role for this uh, emerging industry, which is the impact measurement and management industry. Uh, so far, this sector uh, has been very uh, uh, local, uh, small scale, and uh, very, um, very, very tailored based on each investor's needs. Uh, so the problem with this uh, is that it's not uh, uh, optimal in terms of access to uh, knowledge. So what are the objectives of this call? Well. Given what above, uh, the idea is we uh, aim at providing, uh, we, we, we would like to have uh, informed and better uh, investment de decisions, so to help uh, investors in the social impact investing market dealing with uncertainty. So uh, what we need uh, in this regard, well, uh, it's about transparency, performance benchmarking, quality signal, and uh, a few other aspects that somehow, I mean, I'm thinking uh, about mainstream investors, they already have. Uh, they have, I mean, I'm not going to mention the name. Uh, these are all uh, private companies, so that's why I'm not going to mention uh, uh, names, but there are providers of business intelligence, business information, uh, and all the data you need to make your investment decisions. Uh, and when it comes to impact investors, well, uh, they still struggle. Some of them, they have their own uh, uh, tools, uh, but uh, again, this is very small scale, um, not accessible, and uh, sometimes uh, even raise issues in terms of transparency. Um, and then the, 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 the possibility to compare uh, different investment options, that's still uh, uh, another challenge. So uh, how do we expect to do this? Well, we expect to uh, get informed and better decision uh, in terms of investments through enhanced data capability services, impact management tools and practices. Um, so this would also help us in dealing with an increasing impact that anger, uh, sometimes not really focus uh, on the decision point or the decision perspective, but it's more on the reporting side, but still uh, it's an increasing uh, hunger for uh, impact data. And uh, uh, so basically identifying what we uh, uh, to, 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 to label as impact performance intelligence services or products. And, and I'm going to uh, uh, provide some more information on this uh, idea uh, in, a, in a second. Um, but here the call is even more ambitious. Uh, it's not just uh, we would like to have uh, informed and better investment decision, uh, to enhance data capability services, uh, uh, impact management tools, and other similar uh, knowledge-based uh, products. But we would like also to have all these uh, um, available in the market. Uh, so to make sure these uh, knowledge, data, and uh, uh, benchmarking, quality signal, rating, whatever you can uh, uh, think about when it comes to intelligence services, uh, this should be available in the market to uh, shift the market, to push the market to structure itself. And that's what, from a company perspective, should be uh, uh, considered as market leadership. Uh, having in mind this impact management uh, uh, industry. Um, to this extent, the, 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 the ambition of the call is uh, very, very high, and uh, uh, we have uh, a proxy indicator for uh, assessing whether this ambition will be achieved or not. Uh, and 
kind of uh, backward induction game, we uh, embedded in the, in the design of the call this final uh, proxy, which is the continuity of the actions we are going to fund uh, in terms of business sustainability and therefore market validation. So uh, market validation of products or service that will be uh, developed under this call uh, and with, with the help of this uh, uh, funding uh, are expected to uh, become uh, something stable, spread and well uh, uh, and, and, and well uh, distributed and accessible in the, in the market. Um, so the key principles uh, in this regard are, are, are the following. So first of all, uh, it's about uh, social innovation and experimentation uh, component. And we will see this also uh, in the requirements when it comes to the consortium composition. Um, why social innovation and experimentation, comp experimentation component? Well, uh, because what we have seen so far in the market is that we have very small scale, uh, first attempt, uh, kind of proof of concept, uh, intelligence service in the, in the impact, uh, field, but still uh, we need uh, a collective uh, intelligence effort, uh, so more bottom-up uh, and based on entrepreneurial uh, approaches. Uh, we need um, products or service uh, that are able to innovate, uh, so the novelty component is not the product or service per se, which will of course require some innovation uh, component, but the real novelty is uh, to bring these uh, products or services at scale in the market to shape and help the market structure itself, has already said. Uh, and of course, we, we, we cannot see uh, how this could happen without a robust uh, experimentation component. Uh, first, multi-stakeholder approach, and again, uh, uh, we will see this in the in consortium composition, but also uh, we need to make sure that products or service will be uh, based on a robust, again, uh, 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 and, and solid uh, uh, understanding of the state of the art in terms of uh, benchmarking of already existing solutions and uh, a serious testing and piloting phase of the products or services. Uh, I already mentioned the market validation, but I think this should be uh, uh, stressed uh, uh, once more uh, because we need the product or service uh, uh, to, 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 to match with the needs of the market. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are going to provide funding for uh, probably interesting uh, and promising products or service. But as you uh, recall, our goal is really to help the market structure itself. We are not uh, just uh, providing funding for uh, a growth of small uh, uh, companies. It's, it's what the growth of these companies could bring to the market that uh, is our, uh, let's say, ultimate goal. Um, and, uh, well, market validation for us is the precondition for, for assessing scalability of product or service in terms of potential scalability or uh, actual uh, uh, scale already reached. Uh, this will be up to, the, up to you, up to the applicants, and up to the quality of the proposal you will be able to uh, first submit uh, uh, get awarded and then uh, implement, implement because we all know that that uh, having this in the details and especially in the implementation phase. Uh, what else? Well, <clears throat> social impact performance intelligence service uh, uh, or products, uh, it, it's a pretty wide uh, concept. Uh, it builds on the idea of uh, business intelligence. So we have uh, under this notion a set of reporting tools, uh, online uh, analytical processing, uh, predictive, prescriptive analytics, many others, 
I'm not gonna uh, mention all of them. Uh, you, you have them uh, here anyway, uh, but you can see that it's not a closed uh, list. Uh, and uh, on top of this, what I would like to, to stress is that given we are looking for a market validation scalability, uh, it might be that um, this, I mean, in your uh, proposals, you would not focus on one uh, business uh, uh, performance intelligence service or product uh, because to have them uh, able to scale, you might need a mix of tools, products or services. So uh, this is really, uh, it's not an exhaustive list uh, and it's more just to uh, provide examples of what under this concept of social impact performance intelligence products or service uh, we, 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 might, we might have. Um, so again, uh, it's about being uh, and going beyond uh, reporting. Doesn't mean that reporting is not relevant, but the problem is that reporting usually comes uh, after you made your investment choice. Uh, what we would like to have is to have the investment choice informed by uh, social impact uh, intelligence service or product. Uh, and to this extent, again, has said before on the, on the possible kind of uh, intelligence service uh, or products, uh, there is in the cold text, uh, a list, again, not exhaustive, it's uh, not closed, uh, but a set of eligible activities uh, and with the corresponding deliverables that we uh, provided. Uh, and if you look at the list we have, uh, which spans from, from brainstorming for idea generation to uh, business planning, uh, uh, product or service uh, design, uh, uh, prototyping, uh, development, uh, validation, testing, and everything you have uh, uh, also in the core text. Uh, these activities are all, let's say, the usual activities uh, you have when you uh, set up, well, when you uh, think about, then set up and structure and launch a business. So you have basically the ideational component to the go-to-market phase uh, activities. Um, and what is uh, especially relevant here, I think is uh, we should keep in mind these activities uh, and the uh, deliverables uh, are, uh, of course, the backbone of this, uh, uh, of what, of your uh, uh, proposals, uh, but uh, we have two important aspects we need to consider. Uh, that in the way in which the call has been designed are uh, really uh, relevant, important. Uh, these parts uh, will be uh, objects, uh, subjects to uh, the, uh, during the evaluation, uh, as you can see in the call text, we have uh, the different uh, award criteria and uh, the different award criteria uh, cover mainly uh, the two aspects I'm gonna uh, uh, provide now. Uh, so, first of all, in terms of the consortium composition, um, which is not an award, uh, 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 it's not under the award criteria, but it's about uh, whether you are admissible and eligible, but again, uh, the role of the different actors is relevant to show your uh, uh, the, the, the innovation experimentation component and the, uh, let's say, very market-oriented uh, approach in the design and development of the service or product you are proposing. Uh, um, so, when it comes to the consortium composition, well, two different eligible countries, at least. Uh, so, we need to have one participant from one eligible country and one participant uh, from another eligible countries. You can have, of course, more than two uh, 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 members in your uh, uh, consortium, but this is, let's say, the minimum. Um, and again, uh, we mentioned the research component and the market component. So 
uh, how should these two mm, mm, uh, uh, participants in the consortium, uh, how, how they should look like? Well, uh, one component, at least one component, needs to be a research center or an entity affiliated with a university. Uh, market component, how do we achieve it? Well, we require at least one private or public investor or a support organization. Now, the research component, a research center entity affiliated university, uh, it's more intuitive. Uh, it's because we uh, require innovation and, and experimentation as two key uh, approaches and methodological uh, options in the development of the product. Uh, private or public investor on the one hand or support organization on the other. Well, uh, uh, let me spend uh, one word on this. Uh, the private or public, uh, uh, public investor uh, is not because we want from the proposal uh, uh, point, uh, uh, so the time in which you draft your proposal, it's not because we want someone investing in the product. We want a private or public investor because the, we need to ensure the alignment of the product or service that you are going to propose to the market needs. Uh, so in this case, when it comes to the investor, private or public, in the consortium, as a partner of the consortium, what we expect from this actor is to provide uh, the knowledge required, so the knowledge from the investor perspective, to make sure your product or service is going to fly in the market. Um, another option, maybe you uh, already have uh, or you, you, you think to, to, to have uh, an already advanced knowledge and understanding of the investor's needs, well, uh, another option for you is to have on board a support organization. Um, why is that? Well, because it's not about uh, tailoring a product or service for a specific investor, but it's, it's to make sure that what you are going to propose will grow and spread and scale on the market. So this is uh, 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 in a very quick uh, take, let's say, the, the consortium composition. Um, again, on the key aspects, and, and this is probably uh, uh, the point that I would like to draw uh, your attention uh, uh, now, and, and I think it's a, it's a key uh, innovation in terms of also of the the core design. We uh, given given we are uh, we have as ultimate goal to uh, shift uh, uh, the market to help the market structure itself. Uh, we are not. Uh, uh, Let's say uh, we are not going to be uh, uh, satisfied uh, just with uh, deliverables. Uh, of course, deliverables will be part of your proposals, but what we really value is the achievement of uh, specific milestones. Um, and we, uh, I mean, this is an option that is uh, always there because it's in line with the financial regulation uh, of the European Commission. Uh, as you know, uh, in case of poor implementation, uh, which means uh, basically, uh, or, or well, uh, in case of poor implementation or breach of the uh, GAP, grant agreement, uh, 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 the grant agreement, let's say, uh, uh, the Commission uh, could reduce the amount of the grant. Uh, usually this is a standard clause. Uh, what we did uh, to give a kind of performance-based uh, flavor to this uh, uh, project is to uh, provide a, a limitation in terms of uh, reduction of the grant for, let's say, unsatisfactory implementation uh, and we decided to uh, provide a definition of what satis satisfactory uh, or unsatisfactory implementation uh, would uh, mean. So for us, 
satisfactory implementation would mean uh, full achievement of uh, the milestones, uh, especially the third milestone. Uh, so let's have a look at the milestones. Uh, the first one is that you will have to, uh, at a certain point, uh, and this is up to you, of course, you might have, and we will see the duration, 24, 36 months, uh, but, but uh, uh, this is up to you, to your proposal and to your plan, but at a certain point, you will have to be uh, able to go to the market uh, and bring the product or service to the market. So you can do this in two ways. One, you set up uh, and establish a new company. Uh, in this case, probably uh, the, uh, there will be a need to uh, an amendment of the grant agreement uh, to make sure that this new company uh, figure uh, among the, the, the participants. Uh, but this is one of the options. Another option is that uh, one of the participants uh, to the consortium will take, let's say, the market uh, lead and uh, will bring uh, and commercialize the product or service on behalf of the consortium. In this case, uh, what we uh, expect is to have uh, one of the existing companies uh, or entities in the consortium uh, going to the market with the product or service. And we expect to have these somehow proven with a, a signed agreement among all the parties uh, and all the partners uh, uh, and members of the consortium. The second milestone, uh, and we start getting closer to this market validation uh, proxy, uh, we would like to have, I mean, you have to uh, have a launch event of the product or service and uh, three testimonials from at least uh, three clients, new clients, and these clients could not be part of the consortium, of course, uh, otherwise they would not be uh, new and uh, probably not uh, even clients. Um, these clients and this, this, the achievement of this milestone will be uh, uh, considered as such. Uh, uh, well, once we have the uh, launch event and when we see uh, the contracts uh, signed uh, with the three uh, clients. Uh, just a, a quick point, it could be uh, three clients uh, that accept to, to pay uh, uh, for uh, testing. Uh, the, the product or service doesn't need to come, let's say, at the end, once everything of the product or service is defined and, and set. This is up to you. And it depends also on the complexity and the times that finalizing and having the, the, the product or service ready will, will require. And then the third milestone, which is the most important in terms of uh, uh, this performance based uh, approach. Uh, which is the one that really uh, uh, counts in terms of uh, satisfactory implementation. So since the objective is the continuity of the action, uh, we need to make sure that at the end of the process, you are able to stay on the market with your product or service. So, and how could you do this? Well, uh, there are different options. We have been, we, we, we have tried to be let's say, uh, uh, as much inclusive as possible, uh, uh, and we uh, decided to provide three different options. One is you have uh, an investment contract signed. Uh, so there is an investor. This could be a new investor or the investor that was part of your consortium. Uh, we are not really... Uh, uh, interest in, in, in providing limitation in this regard. What really is important is that the investment is uh, for an overall value uh, that is 1.2 times the amount of the grant we provided. And uh, uh, as you can see in the cold text, it needs to be a repayable finance. Debt, uh, uh, equity, this is up to you uh, or different um, options, but it needs to be a repayable finance. Let's, let me let me please make an example. Uh, uh, another grant uh, would not be considered uh, uh, as an investment. Uh, 
regardless it comes from uh, public sector, uh, European Commission, uh, national level, uh, regional level, or uh, philanthropic uh, foundations, or so on. Uh, it needs to be uh, a repayable finance. Uh, alternatively, uh, you might uh, think that you don't need uh, uh, an external investor because your product or service has been so successful that you achieve uh, uh, a volume of sales that allows you to self-finance your uh, growth. So in this case, what we expect is that you are able to prove that over the period of the grant, you achieve uh, an overall uh, volume of sales that is 0.4 times the amount of the grant. Uh, last option, uh, last but not the least, I mean, again, I mean, this is uh, uh, up to you really, because what we, we care about is the, uh, what happens after uh, uh, the grant uh, uh, is over and how you will be able to uh, help uh, the market to structure itself. So we need you to live well beyond the grant. Uh, you can have uh, a joint venture uh, with other beneficiaries of this call. Uh, what does it mean? You might discover this is, uh, you have some other beneficiaries of the grant that are doing uh, and developing uh, some products or services that are uh, very similar or uh, complementary uh, to uh, those you are uh, working on. And in this case, you can decide to join forces. And in this case, you, we expect you to uh, share with us as a proof of achievement uh, of the milestone, uh, a joint venture agreement uh, for a duration of at least 1.5 times the duration of the project. What does it mean, duration of the project? It means the average duration of the two projects. So let's assume you have 36 months, one project, the other one is 24. So the average will be 36 plus 24 ratio of two. Uh, so, and, and 1.5 times. So this is uh, uh, the third option for uh, identifying the third milestone and consider it as he achieved. Uh, final, final, uh, uh, very quick uh, points. We have um, four uh, uh, video half available. Uh, we expect to fund uh, projects in between uh, uh, five hundred thousand and seven fifty hundred thousand. So. Uh, probably in between six uh, 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 to uh, eight uh, projects. Um, this, of course, will depend also on the amount that, 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 that the proposals will, will require. Uh, this range between 500,000 and 750,000 uh, is a uh, uh, project budget. So this does not preclude submission selection of proposals requesting other amounts. Um, of course, based on whether uh, other amounts uh, will be uh, uh, requested for <clears throat> proposals that will result uh, um, uh, successful, uh, the number of projects we are going to fund might uh, slightly change. Uh, duration, again, uh, uh, it's a range we have uh, in mind because of what we ask. Actually, uh, what we ask, we know it's it's uh, um, it's it's a challenge because it's it's about bringing a, a scale, a service, or product, uh, and probably from scratch uh, or not. Uh, this is this will depends on on your uh, starting point, uh, but the duration is between uh, 24 and 36 months. What we expect extensions uh, are possible if duly justified and through an amendment of the grant agreement. Uh, this is of course a disclaimer we, we always have. Um, 
And uh, uh, just to conclude, there is a functional mailbox uh, to which you can contact us for any questions on the call text. Uh, we will reply not uh, by email, but we will take your uh, questions and reply on the funding and tender portal uh, 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 under the, our call section and in the topic Q and A's uh, um, part of the of the page. Uh, so this is um, the overview uh, I was uh, willing to provide. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Uh, so uh, to let me see, um, uh, I need to uh, remove this. Uh, this presentation. Uh, I think I stopped sharing the screen, right? Yeah, we cannot see it anymore, Julia. Okay, perfect. Excellent. So now, uh, probably I would I would pass the floor to Alvaro. Uh, Hello. Do you hi Alvaro uh, Hello, for you. for more uh, technical aspects regarding your application process? and uh, how uh, it works. Uh, so thank you, Alvaro, for working us through this uh, important step. I mean, the ideas are good, but then uh, the implementation starts from, from, from the application stage. <laughs> thank you, Julia. I'm going to share my presentation here. Um, I hope you can see it now. Not yet. Ah, here Not is. yet. Now it's fine. Yeah. Now it's fine? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alvaro Fortun. I'm the eGrants team leader in the financial unit uh, G4. And uh, well, I see I have here a difficult task now, Friday afternoon. And uh, after interesting interventions from Brigitte and Julio, thank you very much, Brigitte and Julio, for these interesting presentations. Uh, you see a slide saying technical aspects, and I feel maybe your attention is starting going going away. But no, no, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to try to be short and 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 clear, and try to fit in ten minutes. Uh, so yeah, the technical aspect is about uh, the. Uh, how can I? Uh, okay, yes, I'm gonna pass. Yes, about the process of uh, submission the proposals. Uh, I'm going to talk about three, three, three points uh, is the, the you find the intended portal, the submission system, and then particular uh, aspect about budget category uh, and unit costs. Uh, some of the aspect, probably the, the, the ones are here that they already participated with us. They, they know already, but uh, it's important to have uh, to, to have these this elements for for everyone. Um, the first thing is that uh, for the funding and tender portal, there is a novelty that uh, the, the, the portal has changed recently, has been renewed. So uh, has been the, the appearance has been changed a bit, the tabs. So I think it's important that uh, if you didn't, you, you have to, to visit it, to enter and to get familiar with the, with the portal. And uh, well, mainly the, the, the tabs, what has been changed is the, the, the appearance and then the, the search engine has been uh, powered uh, and there are some other elements has been changed. But in general, the, the idea, of course, is, is the same. And here there is the elements that are public with us, the, the, the tabs. And then you have a, a personalized point. What is the, the, the point to sign in? What is the, the EU login? Uh, for the personal service, when you are logged in, uh, there are three elements that each user is supposed to have a unique EU login account. Uh, but each EU login account is linked to one PIC number, which are the unique identifier for organization. And each EU login account is linked to all the roles that are the user has in projects. Um, so first is the EU login. And then it's very easy. If you don't have it, you have to click on register button and then you will receive a, a, via email a link and then you have to set up the password. 
And then after you get a, the EU login, you get a PIC for the organization, registering your organization. And um, yeah, it's the participant ident identification code. Uh, of course, first you need a EU login, as I said, and then you need a register organization. And every organization taking part in a proposal must have a PIC. This is uh, mandatory. Please make sure your organization is not registered already. This is happening more often than you, than you think, that uh, you don't think that you have a peak and then you start uh, registering and then afterwards it was already registered and we have a duplication of, of entities, organization, and then, then it started to be complicated. So first we always recommend to try to find yourself uh, 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 find a, a, a registered organization if if you have already a pick maybe if a long time so try to to find it and if not you go for register your organization uh, the person who registers an organization receives the self registrant role this is the person the contact person with with the commission services for the organization until a leader is appointed will be will be afterwards and this is an important point because the validation of the organization is only triggered once the organization is part of a successful proposal. And that it is then flagging the system with the grant uh, signature date for the validation service. Uh, you will be in contact with the validation service for, for this uh, registration. And then all contact with the validation service has to be through the participant uh, uh, register. Uh, and then the third point is the roles. Once you have the login, you have the pick, and then you have to define your roles. Um, the identity and access management, we call it IAM, and it allows the management of access rights of users in the portal, and it gives a personalized and secure access to the different services in the portal, uh, minimum involvement by the commission staff uh, and allows for flexibility in the online management the consortium and monitoring and tracking service uh, here is uh, i think a very good uh, um, slide about about the roles first thing you will think oh this is very complicated there's a lot of roles here uh, but this is the maximum roles that you can have and it's for the organization and then for the project and then Okay, that for the ones you, you don't know this, you start getting familiar with these uh, acronyms LEAR, LSIGN, PCOCO, uh, but this depends the coordinator and then there's the participant, uh, the, the other co beneficiaries. Okay, you see here the matrix. And then, uh, no problem, this, this presentation is going to be shared later after, the, after the, the, this session. So you can you can have more time to check it. And here you have the nomenclature of all the roles. So no panic. And you can check which uh, which roles are important in the organization and in the project. And no stress because this is the minimum that you need to have in your project, in your organization or for, for a project. For, for all, all ones that we have seen, you can have all of them. It depends on organization, but the minimum is this. So you need a LEAR, a legal entity appointed representative. You need a PICOCO, a primary coordinator contact, or a PACO, which is a participant contact. And then you need a PL sign and a PF sign, which are the legal signatory uh, uh, assigned to a project and the financial signatory assigned to a project. Those are the, I will say, one, two, three, four roles that you need uh, um, to appoint. This could be done after modify uh, afterwards. You here have in the portal uh, a possibility to manage consortium. You can have, you can change it. This is not a problem, but uh, for the moment of starting the project, you have to define all these all these roles. So it's good to start thinking about it. Then we pass to uh, a, a feature that I think for all of you, uh, it's very interesting. And we always promote this, this, this option, which is the partner search in the portal. It has been improved uh, in this new uh, renew of the portal. And uh, you can search partners, you can search uh, projects, you can search uh, topics, 
that is defined by organization, by program, by topic, by country. You have other, all, other filters as well. And then once you, for example, in this case, as I put an example, I search for an uh, for, uh, organization and I search this Swedish one and I have all the, all the results I have. And when I click inside, what I have here is the description uh, of, the, of the company, of the organization, the description, some keywords, where, where is he participating, in which programs, uh, uh, if it's beneficiary, if it's third party, coordinator, and then also you have the map of, of participants that is there afterwards. And uh, yeah, if you are, you are the organization, you can, you can change this, uh, you can edit this uh, description of the company, of the organization uh, by the layer, it's possible to do it. And uh, after also it's appearing the project where this, this organization is participating, and if you are interested in some of the, of the projects, for asking for whatever is the, the, the question, the consult you want to do, you have here the contact project uh, to contact them. So it's a very interesting uh, option to, to do if you, if you need it. So these are all the list of projects in which the organization took part. Um, help, of course, Sometimes you will need some, some help. There is here the tab of uh, guidance and, and, and documents. You can have uh, the help desk or uh, for, for guidance, we, you can have access to the online manual. Again, we're gonna share this presentation after the session. You, you have the link to this online manual or to it how to, which is the wiki. Uh, there are a lot of uh, explanatory uh, uh, presentation slides where you can see the processes. Second point is the submission system. What uh, I'm going to more focus on the second part, you see there is a part A and part B. The part A is the administrative forms that you have to fulfill. And the second part, part B is the narrative part, what is a technical description of the project. Here you have the three aspects, that is the, the word package, uh, uh, milestones and, and deliverables. For the word package, uh, ideally each word, word package should constitute a sub-part of the project. Um, milestones, particularly in this call, as Julio was, was saying, milestones are quite important, I will say. So it will be very quite important to describe very well the milestones to, to, uh, to achieve. Uh, what uh, all the specifications and of course the deliverables you're gonna you're gonna describe novelty or no novelty but uh, yes mix of novelty here in the in the deliverables there is a point where you have to to say the dissemination level of those deliverables what means you have to decide if this deliverable is going to be public or sensitive sensitive is not public so this is the difference of, of here. And you have to choose if whatever deliverable, imagine a report or a brochure or a whatever assessment was you are with point as deliverable, uh, if you decide it's public or not public. And the novelty here is uh, in the near future, all the all approved deliverables in the project are going to be published in the portal. Uh, so just be you have to reflect about about this 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 option if you want to be public or or not it is your choice there is no no there's no mandatory about it but yeah because if not if you put imagine public and then during the project you think ah no sorry we don't want to public this you have to do an amendment of the grant agreement with this an administrative process that we is better to avoid and to think in advance um and then we go to the third uh, point, which is the budget categories and costs. Of course, now in the proposal, you have to prepare the budget and you enter in, in, in um, put it in the category, cost categories. And then you have the typical ones. You have the personal cost, you have the subcontracting purchase. And then in the purchase, you have the travel and subsistence equipment, other goods, works and services, and indirect costs. 
everything normal except i would say but if some of you you are not familiarized with this uh, part is the unit cost that has to be applied in the travel accommodation and subsistence cost uh, it is under the commission decision uh, C2023-4928. Again, in this, uh, there is a link in this presentation to this commission decision where it describes all the aspects. There are some tables uh, in the commission decision about uh, some rates. Uh, for example, for travel costs, it depends the kilometers. For accommodation and subsistence, there is a daily rates uh, um, that you have to apply. Uh, one of the most important things, but well, you have to think about it, how to adapt the budget to, to the unit cost. Uh, it's the, their catering costs are not eligible. And then you are kind of what, 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 but why is not? Well, it's, it's, it's not eligible because you are going to submit this cost to the subsistence cost. And then in the subsistence cost, you have to apply the number, of attendance to an event, if it's the case that you have an event in this in, in the project of a meeting or a conference, and then you apply you multiply the the number of attendance for the rate that is in the commission decision. And therefore, catering invoice is not eligible, but you're going to introduce this cost as subsistence cost. This is the the, the novelty. If you have some question about it uh okay there is some some you can ask us but uh, there, there is very it's very clear in the commission decision how to how to how to apply it and it's it's good to do it in in the budget in the preparation of the proposal and uh and thank you and that's it i i try to be short and clear and uh well i don't know if you have some some uh, questions in the chat i can i we can reply but yes, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alvaro. Um, I well, there is a question actually for you in the mm. chat. Thank you, you. Uh, mm. uh, there are also a few other ones. So, um, just, do you want to take a break while I deal with the others, or do you want to go straight to the one that is for you, Alvaro? Well, we can go in order. I don't know. Start. Start with yours, and then we. Okay, okay. So um, one uh, one is on uh, uh, whether uh, a particular kind of investors uh, is uh, prioritized uh, by the call. Um, the answer is that we kept this very open. Uh, the, the thing is, we need to uh, uh, consider the final goal uh, of, of the pool, uh, which is to have a product or service that help investors, that in turn will become a way to uh, help the market structure itself. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, the investor uh, needs to be the investors part of the consortium. Uh, Ideally, uh, should be should be uh, uh, let's say I mean I mean the 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 the, the broadest uh, uh, and and the more impactful uh, uh, this kind of investors uh, is uh, the better I would say, uh, but there is no uh, specific uh, request in terms of the kind of investors. It can be public, private. It can be uh, an institutional investors, it can be uh, venture uh, capitalist. Uh, uh, this is uh, very open. Uh, of course, we understand that based on the kind of investors, uh, the product and service will uh, will have a different uh, shape, let's say, and with a different shape, a different let's say market potential. Uh, then, then the, there was uh, one on the uh, first milestone. Uh, in the case of an existing company, 
Uh, could the contract be an agreed collaboration cooperation between consortium partners without, for instance, establishing a new corporate structure? Well, in this case, I mean, what we, uh, just to be sure I understood the, the, the question. So uh, the first milestone actually is, pro provides a, two different options. One is exactly uh, establishing a new corporate structure. So you have uh, in a consortium uh, three or four uh, partners, let's say, and uh, uh, they decide to set up uh, together and they will uh, agree on their uh, shareholding, uh, on, on their shares, a new company. Um, and that's the, 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 the case of a new company uh, established. Then uh, the other option is that out of the four uh, members of the consortium, uh, there is a, an agreement uh, in which uh, be, between uh, uh, consortium partners uh, where one of these partners is somehow entrusted of bringing the uh, of of the uh, marketing phase or the commercialization so the the sales uh, uh, only thing in this regard uh, th this uh, this collaboration cooperation contract uh, will need to be uh, to consider uh, all the relevant uh, dimensions so in terms of uh, property rights uh, or uh, um, royalties or uh, so it's not just you know a letter saying that basically three partners let's say on the consortium give give the green light to to the fourth one to 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 sell the, the product we need to see uh, that the agreement is uh, structured and comprehensive enough to uh, have uh, this uh, flying with no uh, particular problems in the in the in the market uh, Alvaro, do you want to well i see one tricky one and uh, um, can an entity based in another continent such as the us but with an office in the eu participate in the consortium what the call is saying uh eligible uh, the applicants must uh, be established in one of the eligible countries. What established, I mean, this office, I guess it has to be established, registered in, in, uh, in the EU. There, uh, if it shows it has some registration legal base in the EU uh, country, uh, then it could consider as a, uh, um, yes, but if it's, I mean, it, it has no, establishment or no registration uh, we uh, as far as i know it has to be kind of legally based in eu country somehow and it has to be uh, uh, yeah checked by the validation services uh, the condition and then what the other one was uh, could the entity be uk 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 based uh, or this is outside eligible country uh, it is uh, not eligible and uh, the uk based uh, the investor could be also for profit commercial investor this is you julio yes i mean the answer here is uh, is yes uh, there are no limitations in this regard mm -hmm. and also the, the 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 subsequent question i don't know alvaro what do you think i mean but uh, uh, this is another important question so is a membership based network uh, with one department of knowledge consider as a research center. Mm. Uh, this is a tricky one. I think we can, um, mm. uh, I think that- I, can, I, can, the, I cannot give a clear answer to this. Exactly. I think we can, we can uh, uh, check. Take note. Yeah. Uh, check. Exactly. Uh, so, okay, then, uh, uh, are there any ad uh, additional eligibility to consortium members uh, need to be in existence for multiple years? 
no, I think this is not uh, an eligibility uh, requirements. Uh, the, the point I think is probably more relevant when it comes to assess the operational uh, and financial capacity, uh, Alvaro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that they will be checked in the in the exactly operational cap financial capacity. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, could you say in which cases the twenty percent rebate would be applied? Well, the the, the twenty percent uh, uh, refers to the uh, achievement. Or, or the satisfactory achievement or unsatisfactory achievement of the third milestone. Of course, I mean, that said, uh, and uh, Alvaro, please correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. uh, this is the um, cap uh, of the reduction we foresee in case of unsatisfactory uh, implementation vis-a-vis -vis the achievement of the third milestone. Uh, Correct. Then all the uh, general rules still uh, apply. <laughs> um, so uh, in case uh, uh, a project uh, uh, after the signature of the grant agreement uh, doesn't even start and there is no activity at all, uh, of course, uh, you are not going to get the 80% of the grant because there is this cap. No, I mean, the cap refers to uh, the reduction for unsatisfactory implementation of the third milestone. Uh, what else? Uh, then I see other two questions. Maybe we can deal with them uh, quickly. Uh, and I would propose then to close. Uh, can the solution developed within the project be based on an existing product or service of one of the beneficiaries? Uh, well, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I think this is uh, up to the up to the uh, consortium to decide. Uh, of course, um, this will will uh, somehow impact the way in which. Uh, the consortium will be set up, I guess, because um, if uh, there is a, a, an existing product or service uh, and this is owned by one of the beneficiaries, uh, there will be uh, there will be uh, some uh, work to do in terms of uh, finding an agreement uh, with the others and understanding what what's the let's say intellectual property uh, uh, right setting of of the uh, from the starting point at the end of uh, the process, but this is uh, up to the, 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 the consortium to decide, it's not uh, up to us. Uh, and then, um, um, are there any rules on which consortium member research supporting measures should be project coordinator? Uh, no, we don't have any specific uh, requirements in this regard. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, I see a few uh, another question coming. Um, just I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take this one. Then uh, I, I would I would tend to close, but not to uh, to close the, the, the let's say the meeting, but not the, the the exchange. The exchange, as mentioned before, could happen. Uh, 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 through the uh, functional mailbox, and we will uh, uh, reply publicly to make sure uh, equal treatment is, uh, uh, um, I mean, to, to, to make sure uh, equal treatment for, for all. So any question we get, we publish the question, uh, maybe removing uh, uh, if there are uh, sensible information, uh, but, but the sensitive information, but that we are we publish the question and the official uh, answer. Uh, so this last uh, uh, question is uh, with respect to the term milestone assigned joint venture contract with another grants beneficiary is necessary. Please define what constitutes another grants beneficiary, perhaps beneficiary of this call in the past. Well, this is the first time we have this call. Uh, 
uh, and uh, uh, if we are going to fund, let's say, six to eight projects, the beneficiary will need to be one of these uh, six uh, to eight. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, it's very limited in this regard. But you are going to work with someone who uh, has been uh, uh, doing a similar work. Uh, so um, similar in the sense that was developed under this call. Uh, there are no previous uh, call. This is uh, um, the first one. Um, and depending on the quality of the proposal we will receive uh, and, the, and the quality of the implementation, there, there might be another one, but this depends on also on you. So just to put some pressure on you and to close uh, the meeting to, and, and thank you uh, again for joining us. Uh, Again, remember uh, uh, the functional mailbox, uh, uh, which, by the way, is also on the funding and tender portals and in the call text. Uh, and in, in, so, don't please feel free to 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 ask for for additional information and clarification uh, uh, along the the, the process. Uh, probably we uh, will. Uh, um, see each other in the future or not. Uh, in any case, I wish you uh, a very good weekend uh, ahead. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.